Hello, this is Catherine from Accelerated Reader. Quick shout out to C. Carvagilis for requesting this book. I will be reading Margie's Diner. Everyone in town knows Margie. She runs Margie's Diner. Margie's Diner is open 24 hours a day. You never can tell who you'll meet there. The breakfast crowd starts coming in at 7 o'clock. Mr. Ross is in a hurry. He flips through his paper, sips a cup of coffee, and waits for his breakfast to be served. A vacationing family comes in for a big breakfast. They'll be driving 300 miles before they stop again. Joe has a truck route. He drives through town twice a week, and he always stops at Margie's. Feels good to be off the highway, Joe says, climbing up on a stool. I'll have my usual, Bill. Bill, the short order cook, is behind the counter. Saw you coming. It's almost ready. Margie has to feed all these people. Bill is busy at the grill, frying bacon and sausages, flipping pancakes, and stirring hash browns. He can handle lots of different orders at once. Bill can even crack an egg with one hand. The baker has been working since midnight, making muffins and donuts, cakes and pies. Now her shift is over. You've done it again, Margie says. Everything looks delicious. See you tomorrow. Out front, breakfast is going just fine. It's still early, but Margie is already in the kitchen, preparing for lunch and dinner. A waitress rushes in with a tray full of dirty dishes. We'd better have these washed right away, Margie, she warns. It's really getting busy out there. The diner is a cozy place. On cold mornings, the windows steam up. The smells of coffee, cinnamon buns, and sausages blend together. At Margie's, you can get good home cooking. Bill pokes his head in the kitchen doorway. Margie, can you give us a hand out front for a while? When things get busy at the diner, everyone pitches in. They even take turns at the cash register. When the breakfast rush is over, Bill sits down to have a cup of coffee. This is the first break he's had all morning. Margie takes her break at the same time. She sits in a booth working on bills. When a delivery truck pulls up out back, Margie's break is over. It's almost noon. Bill prepares the grill and carries a batch of meatballs to the steam table. The waitresses refill the salt and pepper shakers and place fresh bottles of ketchup on each table. Margie writes the lunch specials on a chalkboard. Now they are ready for the lunchtime crowd. Mike, a policeman, comes in and swings onto one of the stools at the counter. Well, Mike, if you're here, it must be 1215. Bill says, your burger is already on the grill. What a busy place. There's hardly an empty seat to be found. A gang of construction workers go over some blueprints while they wait for lunch to be served. A newspaper reporter eats his soup of the day, tomato, and leaves through notes for a story. 
For the past two weeks, a telephone company crew has been repairing cables nearby. Margie's Diner has become their favorite lunchtime spot. Hey Margie, the crew boss says. We think you made the best french fries in town. After a while, the lunchtime crowd thins out. Now Margie has time to phone her suppliers with her weekly order. She needs 195 pounds of flour, 60 pounds of bacon, 125 pounds of sugar, plus sausage, chopped meat, vegetables, milk, eggs, ice cream, and more. You use up lots of groceries when you feed as many people as Margie does. One of the waitresses is printing the blue plate special on cards for tonight's dinner menus. She turns to the booth behind her. Gee, you have a lot of books today, Molly. Margie's daughter, Molly, comes in every day for an after-school snack. This time, Margie brings her a steaming mug of hot chocolate. Wow, have I got a ton of homework tonight, Molly gripes. Okay, you better get right to it. The booth is all yours, Margie says. Soon, the high school crowd shows up. The diner is their favorite place to hang out. They drop quarters into the jukebox and turn the music up as loud as they can. One of the girls orders a kitchen sink sundae. It has everything. Are you going to eat all that, Sue? Her friend teases. Everyone talks at once. That's my favorite song. Don't you love it? Can you believe that history assignment? Are you going to the game on Saturday night? By five o'clock, Bill and the waitresses are ready to go home. They've been on their feet for hours. The night crew comes in to take over. Good night, Margie, Bill says. Don't forget, we're having stew tomorrow. It's going to be another chilly day. Margie is having an early dinner with her family. Margie's husband joins Margie and Molly at the din diner every evening after work. Now, now's their chance to catch up on one another's news. I'll be home at my usual time, Margie tells them. There are just a few things to finish up. Once again, the diner is crowded with customers. They study their menus. The diner has something for everyone. One family stops in for a quick bite on their way to the movies. Could we have our order taken right away, please? We're rushing to make the 7 o'clock show. At the next booth, Margie is ordering a deluxe dinner. On the house for Ned. He's this week's winner of the jelly bean contest, Margie says. He guessed how many beans are in the jar. Mr. Reynolds lives close to Margie's diner. He comes in every night and orders the blue plate special for his supper. Margie and all her workers know him. Today is a special day, Mr. Reynolds' birthday and Margie has a surprise for him. Happy birthday, Mr. Reynolds, everyone shouts. I don't believe it, he exclaims. How did you know? Hope you like chocolate, Margie says with a wink. At last, things slow down. Margie checks her list of supplies for tomorrow. Are there clean aprons? Are there enough paper napkins? She takes a turkey out of the freezer to thaw. She goes over tomorrow's menu. Margie was going to make mushroom soup, but the mushrooms were never delivered. She decides to make pea soup instead. 
It's time for Margie to leave. Remember, the floor waxers will be here later, Margie says. All the money in the cash register has been counted. On her way home, Margie will make a night deposit at the bank. Margie's day is finally over. She heads home, knowing that any late customers will be well taken care of by the night crew at Margie's diner. The end. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what books you like for me to read next. As always, thank you for listening.